Hey Medicals, today we are going to learn about instruments for ENT practicals. So first instrument is Mollison's Mastoid Retractor. It is also called as Mollison's Self-Retaining Hemostatic Mastoid Retractor. Look over here. This is a self-retaining mastoid retractor. Here, here we have four prongs on both blades. And remember that it is self-retaining and hemostatic. So the use of Mollison's mastoid retractor is harvesting temporalis fascia, mastoidectomy and tympanoplasty, and in head and neck surgeries like tracheostomy and laryngofacial. So basically, it is used to retract the soft tissues after the incision and elevation of the flaps. So this is about Mollison's mastoid retractor. The next instrument is St. Clair Thompson's nasal speculum. Look over here. This is nasal speculum. It has long blades which are concave from inside. Here, these are concave from inside. And generally, it is held over the hooked index finger of the non-dormant hand here and then blades are closed by pressing between the middle and ring finger. So the uses of the nasal speculum are first that is diagnostic uses. It is used for anterior rhinoscopy. Also it is used to diagnose lateral wall of the nose and nasal cavity. While therapeutic uses are removal of foreign bodies, enteral wash and nasal packing. It is used in certain nasal surgeries like SMR and septoplasty. SMR means submucous resection of the nasal septum. So this is about St. Clair Thompson nasal speculum. Now the third instrument is Tillis dressing forceps. Look over here. This is Tillis dressing forcep and it has a box joint here. This is the box joint and what are the uses of Tillis dressing forceps? The uses are it is used for packing or unpacking the ear canal or mastoid cavity. The second one is for delivery of medicated dressing into the ear canal. It can be used for packing and unpacking the nose for introduction of medicated plages for local anesthesia in the nasal cavity. And the last one is removal of foreign body or crust or debris in the nose or from the ear. So these are the uses of tillage dressing forceps. The fourth instrument is Hartman dressing forceps and it is looks exactly similar like tillage dressing forceps. But here we have the screw joint and in tillage dressing forceps we have the box joint. Let's look over it. Yes, this is the box joint and in Hartman dressing forceps we have the screw joint. There are jaws and these are serrated and grooved. So from these two points we can differentiate the Tillage dressing forceps and the Hartman dressing forceps. And the Hartman dressing forceps it is used for the removal of foreign body from the nose. So the use of Hartman dressing forceps is removal of foreign body from the nose. Don't confuse over the Tillage dressing forceps and the Hartman dressing forceps. Okay. The next one is tongue depressor. So look over here. These are the tongue depressors. So it has a flat end and a slightly curved end. This is the curved end and this is flat end. The flat end is placed over the anterior two third of the tongue to depress it. Remember that flat end is placed over the anterior two third of the tongue. And remember that the posterior one third of the tongue should not be touched in order to prevent gag reflex. Nowadays, this type of tongue depressor are available in the market. This can be placed in your examination table. But most of the time, 
this type of tongue depressors are placed in your examination table now what are the uses of tongue depressor so uses are examination of oral cavity and oropharynx to retract the lips and cheek yes to express pus out of the tonsil that is it is done in septic squeeze test to test the gag reflex yes for cold spatula test to check patency of nasal package it can be used for posterior rhinoscopy and at last it can be used for oral cavity procedures like injection of steroids biopsy excision of the cyst so these are the uses of tongue depressor now the next instrument is boil davis mouth gag here we have the boils davis mouth gag look over here and in this diagram these are the blades so basically it has two components that is boil blade and davis gag and these both are used simultaneously and these tongue blades of various sizes can be interchanged according to the age of the patient it helps to keep the mouth open and push the tongue up and away from the operation site and the whole assembly can be lifted up and maintained in that position using the so basically it is used for opening the mouth and depressing the tongue and it is used for the various operations like the palate surgery or soft palate surgery in oropharynx it is used for tonsillectomy or pharyngoplasty in nasopharynx it can be used for adenoidectomy or excision of angiofibroma and this whole boils davis mouth gag is assembled and maintained in the position by using draffin's bipod remember that it is maintained in the position by using draffin's bipod the next instrument is jennings mouth gag look at this image this is the image of jennings mouth gag and it is used for keeping the mouth open during the intraocular surgery when the retraction of tongue is not required or desirable and and remember that it is generally applied in the center of the mouth so the uses are in surgeries like soft palate and the floor of mouth it can be used in dental surgeries so this is about the jennings mouth gag the next instrument is draffin's bipod so look over here these are the draffin's bipod so it consists of two rods with multiple rings in a row look over here these are the multiple rings and these are the two rods they can be assembled to vary the height at which the tongue blades of the boils davis mouth gag can be suspended so these are used to anchor and fix the boils davis mouth gag that we discussed before yes it is used for fixing the boils davis mouth gag so what are the uses of draffin's bipod so uses are it is anchor and fix the boils davis mouth gag yes and it can be used in oropharyngeal surgeries like it is used in adeno tonsillectomy so this is about draffin's bipod the next instrument is tonsil holding forceps so look at this image this is the tonsil holding forceps and it is also called as dennis brown's forceps so what is the use of tonsil holding forceps so the use is it is used to hold the tonsil the name itself suggesting that used for tonsil so it is used to hold the tonsil and it is used in surgeries like tonsillectomy so this is about tonsil holding forceps now the next instrument is tonsil artery forceps so there are the two types of the tonsil artery forceps the straight and curved this is the tonsil artery curve forceps and the straight forceps is used to catch the bleeding point and the curved one is used to replacement of forceps before trying with ligature so basically the curved one is used for replacement so what is the use of tonsil artery forceps 
it is used for ligation of the bleeding point and it is used in tonsillectomy